Greetings all, Benny from East West. Uh, I just thought to take a look at the rate market, uh, macro in general, and TLT. And I'm going to start off here by just this tweet, a um, couple of tweets that sort of caught my eye. I don't know Craig Shapiro, never met him, not affiliated with him in any way, not endorsing his tweet in any way. But this just sort of really grabbed my attention that Yellen is going to have to sell $530 billion dollars of issuance next week in three days that's a lot that that is just a lot of money it's a lot of issuance for the market to soak up and this is just a second one that, that came out uh, this morning my time um, that I, I kind of agree that you know it's difficult to see how they're going to stop the the sell-off the government's got no ability to raise taxes or cut spending uh, I'm not going to get into the debate about the US government and its dysfunctionality. But the point remains, next week the Treasury is selling $530 billion of bills and bonds over a three-day period. That Once again, that, that is just a lot of issuance for the market to soak up. And so on, on the back of that, it's hard to be bullish on the near-term outlook for rates, or longer-term rates at least. So that leads me into... TLT. Just looking at it monthly here, I mean, you can see that we're getting pretty close to basically, as far as this data goes back, what's well, effectively the all-time lows. I mean, we're careering towards it. Now, the question is, of course, are we going to go through it? Well, it's it's hard to stand in the way of this. That I mean, that's what I think. And you just think about what I just talked about, and there's no end in sight to that. Like there's just more and more issuance going on, and I know there's counter arguments, and yes, that they're valid, but the fact remains that the U.S. Treasury is just issuing like absolute crazy, and as a result, it's just difficult to see how the yields are going to not keep rising, i.e., the bond prices are not going to keep selling off, uh, and that I think is going to have quite the impact. Well, it has had the impact on TLT, but of course. You know, is it going to go further? Well, just looking at this on the broad picture, I would tend to think that we've got some sort of five-wave pattern going in here. But, you know, it, its I don't think it's complete yet. Let's just say that. I think what that means is that, yes, there is going to be a bottom to it, and I don't know what changes it, but I would think it's probably at this point going to have to be some sort of government interventions they're going to have to do something to stop this because i otherwise i can't see how this is going to turn around if if everything stays the way it is so i pointed this out in the last video this is just we're into a weekly now but looking at this as an ichimoku sense is that there's just to me there's nothing bullish going on here there is no bullish signal that i can see uh but there is a caveat on that just as things sit, at least on the weekly for now, we are we do have divergence between this bottom and whenever this bottom is coming in, as long as course of this this low holds in the RSI. So, if we can make a bottom somewhere and start to bounce, well then, you know you can go back and then say, yeah, well that's that's a pretty good case for a pivot. But I sorry, I just can't see it. I, I, there's just nothing in this market at the moment that's making me think that this is about to turn around anytime soon now just looking at this in a, in a cycle perspective we're, we're at day 46 of this latest cycle as far as i can ascertain so i you know it, this this is daily cycle four that, that we had coming in here and then at the moment we're on day 46 of the next cycle so these cycles in in tlt tend to run quite long so even in a cyclical perspective there's still nothing here for me to suggest that we're we're at a turning point. I, I think there's there is more to go to the downside. I'm if you're long and holding, I, mean, I I don't know what to tell you. I I can't see anything bullish in this chart whatsoever. I mean, the only thing I can see is that you know there are some some gaps here that that might need to be filled, but it it, it could be just a really long time before we're in a position to come back and fill these. This is just so weak. Um, it. I, I wouldn't buy it with Putin's money. Put it that way. I just I can't I cannot see a bounce coming anytime soon. We're gonna it's like I said. I, I think it's going to be have to be some sort of government maneuvering, some sort of government intervention in in the bonds 
to 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 halt this slide. Now, it, it could be that rate cuts are coming soon, and, and we'll have a look at some connotations of the curve with that. But just as things sit here and now, this I I cannot see any rally coming here anytime soon, unless something changes dramatically. Now, just over here on the ten-year yield chart. Now, all's not lost because we still do have the possibility, and it, you know this is obviously just mirrored uh, in TLT. We do have still have the possibility that we we can diverge, but once again. I just can't see any topping action here at the moment. I, I, I cannot see anything that's warning me that this run in the yields is over. I, I, I think 5%, I think that's almost a given at this point. But, you know, I, I would say that, even though it's a little bit fluky, that one, two, three, four, that we, we, we're coming up to get a fifth wave, uh, and that the rates, of course, will top out at some point because... I don't think this can go on forever. This has got to stop one way or the other. Like something has definitely got to change here. But I don't think we're at that point yet. I, I just I, I can't see it. Now, things are a slightly different picture to me, at least on these two-year yields up the front, where you could kind of make the argument that, you know, we're beginning to really start to wedge in here and that these things uh, are out of puff. And I pointed out in the last video, the RSI is telling us that you know that the, the two-year yield is is really starting to battle to go any higher. So, you know that that just reiterates the point that I made last time about the steepening of the curve and and what that means going forward. So, you know this this sort of wedge is probably something to keep keep your eye on. Um, but you know those longer-term yields that they just look like they're going to keep rising for now at least. Uh, you know, maybe you could incorporate some of that. Uh, but, you know, we are starting to pinch in here on, on to me, what looks like a potential top. Uh, but we're not there yet. But we are definitely struggling around this 5% mark. You can just see that it's, you know, it's it's very, very clear here that the, the market is just battling away here. It is just battling every time it gets to 5%. Like it's, it doesn't want to be up here, to me at least. I think it's just, signaling that it's had enough but what that brings us into now is a very very dramatic steepening of the curve of the two tenths curve and right now we're, we're right on the area now what's really grabbed my attention about this on a weekly is that the close this week has produced a cloud break okay so i sort of said the last time that i, I thought that the, the 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 flattening had finished. I mean, maybe that's stating the obvious, but this cloud break to me is really starting to tell me something. So I think what this would suggest is that rates, at least the front end rates, are going to have to get cut, and maybe that's part of the government's or, or the Fed's response to what's going on. That the rates are going to have to get cut, but we're not there yet. Remember that when we look back through history. The curve will steepen a lot, uh, will steepen, and that the rates tend to get cut something like six, six odd plus months after the steepening begins. So, you know, maybe you could say the steepening began here in July. So it may not be until the end of the year where we start getting rate cuts and this will accelerate on. But this is definitely a warning shot that the market's not happy. Like the market's sniffing something out that, you know, there is a there's a problem. I mean, we know there's a problem. Everyone's known there's a problem for a long time, but it just feels like the chickens might be coming home to roost here. And this curve is really starting to tell me something, especially now we've got this weekly cloud break. So this is just the 10-year note futures. And in a similar vein to, to TLT, we, we're, we're coming down here to some really crucial areas. I mean, we're this we haven't been this low for, you know, the last time we were this low was was 07 so you know this is a dramatic sell-off it's the it, but like i said i i think that the chances are that you know this is looking extremely light five waves down and we could be getting closer to this finishing now if it finishes i'm not going to read that that means that the rates are going to go do this you know they're not going to go parabolic uh, I think it'll be more a, a gradual move back up. But like I said, I, 
that that's in the future. I, I can't see the bottom of this right now. I, I there's nothing here to tell me other than that, that there's a couple of things like the RSI is starting to diverge away. So maybe the bottom's close, but I'm not seeing any immediate. This this is a monthly too. Remember, I'm not seeing an immediate candle or candles. Bring this into a weekly. That's telling me that. That, that we're done. I, I just think that with everything that the market's facing, that there, there's just more downside to go. I think this area is most likely going to get breached as, as the 10-year the yield goes through 5%. Now, when we just turn our attention to the, the dollar index, I mean, this is getting interesting because this sort of candle here, that to me is a, is a shooting star on the weekly and it just touched the 50. So I, I don't know... I don't know. I, I wouldn't. This is the first actual down week we've had in the dollar index for since July. So it's been a massive rip. So I, I I don't know if I've got an overall view here, but this this certainly caught my attention. And this candle, this is a shooting star candle. So that's caught my attention as as it's just picked the fifty there. But whether or not you know, with what we've got coming, is, is does this just keep going? I, I, We'll have to see what happens next week, but that that's something to pay attention to when you start to tie the whole picture together. But this shooting star candle is is something of interest, I think, in the dollar index at least, and how that ties into rates. I don't know, but you know, I, it's it's a difficult rally to stand in front of. That that just might be the first warning shot that perhaps, and that's a very big if, but perhaps this is ready to to rest or at least pause. So that just leads me to how I'm sort of viewing the S and P, and this is this is ongoing. I, I'm not willing to um, stick a flag in the ground and say that this is definitely a, an impulse down. But it, there's nothing at the moment that's telling me that it's it's not an impulse. Um, and right now we've just come in and tested this little area, but all I can see at the moment is what looks like a one wave, an ABC for a two. A one, two, three, and now we're getting this chop for potentially a four, and then coming down for for a, the fifth of the third. Um, so I am quite nervous about the overall look of the stock market. I, I don't think it looks great. If we start clearing these areas and we kick on, then all good and well. But we know that we we've lost this overall trend channel now, and we're just sort of testing it. We're just going through a period now where we're testing it, but I, I can only see more downside, and that's the S and P. I, I think the Russell looks even more dire. So I've iterated this before, but what I can see here is that we've got this impulsive COVID rip. We've had a, had a wave down. We've had a flat triangle here, and that it just to me says that we're going to get another big wave down. So I don't know if that means that everything crescendos when, when the rates absolutely top out. And the thing is, though, this can keep falling even though as the rates get cut. When you look back through history, what you'll see is that rates actually complete their fall as the rates... Are, sorry, the, the stocks will tend to complete their fall as the rates are getting cut. So just when you have a, a quick flick back through history, and this at the bottom here, this is just... Um, the US cash rate but what you can see here is rates got cut even though here we we were still trending down but rates got cut it wasn't until they got to the bottom that, that the stock started rallying um, now here you can see rates got, got tightened but the stocks kept going it's, but here's an example the rates got cut but as the rates got cut the stocks kept falling I mean that's the GFC but even here rates got cut but this was COVID so that's a little bit different but the point being is that I think what you'll find is as the rates get cut, the stocks will continue to fall to a point where the rates get low enough to make fixed interest less attractive, at which point we'll, we'll get the rally again. But I don't, I don't think we're there yet. Th this sort of thing is probably more pronounced when you look at, say, the Dow or the s and I'm just looking at the Russell primarily because I think that the structure of the Russell... And, and what I mean is when I go back and talk about this, looks a lot clearer than perhaps the S&P does. And so finally, we just think about, well, okay, are we just going to come down here? Are we going to go through the point where the market's 
considered in a correction, which would be 10% off the top. I think personally that this is going to get breached, but whether or not we, we fall 20%, which would be here, I, I think that is open to debate. It cannot be ruled out, but you know that that would constitute the bear market line, which which is is nothing more than than twenty percent from the high. So that is a long way off. I'm not willing to sort of say that that's what's going to happen because I wanted to focus more on the rates. But I think the one thing that we can just garner at the moment is that the yield on this on this ten year uh, ten year bond is not stopping it is there's nothing telling me that this is about to roll over so look that's it i just we we're just going to have to see like i said there's, there's nearly there's half a trillion dollars is going to get issued in three days next week I, I can't see how that's going to stop the price of bonds going further so that that's kind of how we sit i think that's got bad connotations for for the for the stock market in general uh but we will just have to wait and see what the powers be do about it because my general feeling is that at some point before long, someone somewhere is going to have to do something about this because I, I cannot see how it can keep going. Anyway, look, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye for now.